Welcome back everyone to the EGF. We just got done with the lag test for match number three. Through two sets, Hawaii is currently 4-0. and oh. They have not dropped a single game so far, and so they are up 8 to nothing as we enter set number three. And uh, Dara, who do we have coming into the lobby next? Uh, that's, that's a phenomenal question. Thank you so <laughs> much for asking. We should be seeing MKL Rising going up against Nyx. So wouldn't be able to tell you who either of these players play unless you just so happen to have the sauce. Uh, M MKL Rising is uh, typically a Ness main for Canisius, and yep, he's going with the Ness. Nick's going Ness with the Corrin. So this matchup, let me tell you a little something about Ness Corrin. Uh, pain and suffering from the olden days. So from Smash 4, this was perhaps one of Ness's most painful matchups, if not the most painful. He couldn't do anything. Uh, even now, it's not fantastic. Corrin has the tendency to wall out Ness with a four grid with a neutral and Ness just really struggles uh, to get in on Quarren. Now granted, Ness's advantage is so solid against Quarren, but wow, it can be so tough to initiate. Ness struggles to land. That's no double jump from MKL, and right now Nyx is just keeping MKL stuck in the uh, in the corner. Yeah, absolutely. That side B not gonna connect though. And back into neutral, that was an ambitious up the Oh my goodness, yeah. MKL Rising playing with fires. He nearly got his shield broken in that sequence. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I do appreciate those PK Thunders, but just canceling them into the ground a little bit early instead of going through like a full follow-up where we're trying to get the head uh, to connect can be definitely extremely risky. But right now, this is definitely MKL's uh, edge guard to take right now. Nyx, unfortunately, to be mashing out of there and immediately buffers the neutral getup. Most people, as soon as they you know barely get back onto the stage, they end up buffering either roll or the neutral getup. So good punish from MKL to be able to do that. Ooh, that's a, that's a sweet spot. Good stuff there. And Nick's gonna be able to make it back to stage, although taking a little bit of percent to do so. 32 on this first stock, and finally some first hits onto MKL rising second stock. Who sets Gets up the jab block, but not able to actually find the tech chase uh, from that scenario either. Goes for the magnet into drag down forward and F smash. Uh, normally you'd see like all hits of the four leader connect, but they either initiated it late or uh, they fast fell it. A bit greedy on the F smash, but still the damage is done. Nyx at 70% now. Still not quite a kill percent, but uh, not too far away from it either. Ooh, Ooh the shield bet. Mm -hmm. Normally that's like usually a really powerful setup. Uh, if you keep holding on to it, it can cause shield breaks, it can cause shield pokes, you know, the whole thing. But uh, Nyx dropping it just a little bit too early. Right now, MKL with an excellent parry, uh, but unfortunately already committing to pressing the button. No punish on the whip counter. Ooh, good stall out there by Nyx to uh, use that side B and then just hold on and dodge the attack from MKL. Now using the rocket and there it is! It's gonna land for the second stock! MKL Rising with a big lead. Yeah, that's an excellent PK from the two. They baited Nyx into thinking that they're gonna hit them with the head or perhaps the tail of it, and they ended up looping it back down. So that was a fantastic mix-up. Nyx got a little bit too greedy on the whiff punish going through an F smash when they really did not have the time to do so. And so MKL sitting at a huge stock lead, foiled themselves, able to get the foiled but not enough frame advantage to connect the dash grab. Uh, and right now, Mm, able to angle the PK fire, not able to get any follow-ups, but trying to force the uh, positioning a little bit more. Nyx still trying to find a way in. Only 67% on MKL's second stock here. This is close to kill percent, but it would take a strong hit of something to really do it in. A counter on his recovery. That's the second time we've seen him try and do that. A little bit ambitious, too. Mm -hmm. And... That uh, opportunity not gonna get punished. And Kale gonna just like sort of back away, even though that was like a prime opportunity to punish. Trying to land on top of Quarren, usually a, a bad idea. Ooh, almost getting the body block on a PK Thunder, but connecting the up B into the up air, and right now Nyx has brought it all the way back. Uh, you know, definitely still within the realm of doability for them, but. Wow, was a, the low recovery, goodness. Yeah, that was a big stock for Nyx to take, and now stringing together a couple hits, but he's gonna get 
hit to the corner here, not able to convert it is MKL. And now a wow. few more aerials racking up that percentage. Nyx has made it all the way back. This is not out of the question at all anymore. And that shield pressure coming through, that dash attack not gonna be able to do it. Ooh, the PK flash nearly taking the stock, but now the thunder or PK thunder pressuring Nyx off stage. Gets the conversion, not dead yet. Holds yeah, on so be far. The double jump, gonna try to peek it from the onto the ledge. Uh, you know, didn't go through any stalls there, but that back through is gonna be more than enough to take it. Uh, so really, really, you know, just good cleanup from MKL. Nyx was making quite the comeback. That was 100% doable for them. Uh, we saw like towards the end how, you know, this matchup can be quite difficult for now sometimes where he struggles to get out of the corner, but man, that move is so like minus. On, on shield like that, that move has so much end lag, you really should not be letting Quillian get away with those. Uh, and MKL was able to finally find the proper punish on it. But yeah, um, and again, like Nyx was also buffering like a lot of neutral get up into uh, those yo-yos, which, you know, could ultimately spell doom. So you have to just be reactive, you have to wait until Ness, um, you know, goes for it, and then you'd be able to get up attack him for it, you know? Yeah, and uh, I I do think it's worth noting that I mean Nick's made that comeback possible. He just could not find a, a, a the last stray hit to really give him advantage. I do feel like uh, for MKL he really had a whole lot of advantage when he pushed Nick's off the stage, uh, but that's easier said than done. Yeah, definitely. Um, Nyx just sort of kept MKL in the corner. Had any of those back hills or charge neutral bees connected, that most definitely would have been the stock. Uh, going into game number two, there were just like a couple of matchup things that Nyx could have sort of ironed out. Um, and I think, you know, after they were able to make those adjustments, we'll be seeing a much closer game too. Should be good to watch uh, as we are getting our, our uh, counter picks and strikes in for the stages as we speak. It looks like Lilat, Yoshi's, and Battlefield are off the board here. Uh, and we await to hear the stage choice from Nyx. If you're Corrin going up against Ness, where would you go? Corrin going up against Ness, I would run that back to town. Town is an excellent stage for Corrin in this matchup. Um, you know, banning those dry plots immediately from uh, MKL was an excellent idea. The last thing you want to be is juggled by Corrin on those plots, because man, she can do falling nails and then up airs and forward airs and everything that she wants to. So going back to Town City is not that bad of an idea. Uh, both, but wow, they're actually going to end up going to FD, which again, isn't bad either. Like Corrin can still catch landings just in a different way, where she sort of fades out and waits for air dodges rather than trying to extend on plats. 41% early and racked up onto Nyx here. And uh, remember, if Nyx wins this set, he earns Hawaii a few more points, but it would also extend his possibility to earn some more. If MKL Rising wins this match right here, he will win the set and get some bonus points for his team. And Same with that being said, yeah, was, was, uh, I like the way that Nyx is going through dash attack a lot in this game. Wow, gonna be countering the PK Thunder, but only the tail end of it. So the projectile continues to persevere, and MKL was able to get out of that position. Used the rocket to get away, and now at 93, Nyx is off stage. Ooh, didn't throw out a move there. That could have been an up air. I'm not sure if it would have killed, but either way, at that He'll point, keep like, that in Ness would be able to link it in, unfortunate angle, they're going for the SD. Uh, but yeah, like, the window's, like, pretty tight to be able to get PK Thunder to up it. So more often than not, you're just going to be trying to punish uh, a poor defensive option. That dash attack not going to be able to take it quite yet. And again, excellent use of PK Flash from MKL. Once again, like, the goal is not to connect the Flash itself, but to sort of force the opponent to, uh, use up precious resources. And Nyx, no! Air dodging to the death. Oh, so unfortunate considering that they had the momentum up until now. Yeah, that was big too because that's another stock gone in MKL. I mean, we saw Nyx nearly make up a stock last time, but still with two stocks on the board, this is big for Nyx. 
able to get the side B, and that's the back here that right now MKL doesn't have a double jump, can't do dodge, otherwise they wouldn't be able to PK Tony to get back onto the stage. An excellent edge guard from Nyx, uh, gonna be hit with the PK Fire, but no follow up from MKL, wasn't able to actually get the sweet spot. Nyx making the comeback possible, but he's eaten 80% on this Ooh, stock already. Huge. And the PK Fire means plenty of damage. Stronger hit a back air, but it's all the way across the stage, so it won't mean too much other than positioning. And Nyx already able to wait, work his way back in in neutral, finds the back air, can't land the edge guard, does land that forward smash though, and this now so he's in trouble. Ah, oh, that would have definitely been the counter to take the stock had Nyx chosen to drop down there, but alas, they did not. Uh, right now, that is a nest trying to get out of the coin against the coin, and my friend, pain and suffering, truly. Uh, no, out of shield punish on these dash attacks. Nyx anticipating a cross-up, but I'm Kale just not getting them. This is oh a lot God. of dash attacks on the shield, too, for MKL. Good air dodge to get around that thunder. The back throw, is it going to do it? It will, and that seals the set for MKL Rising. Canisius is on the board. Wow, that F smash was, again, like, once again, like, a little bit unfortunate. Uh, Quarren's in that position. They tech, they usually try to look for charged F smash on shield, uh, but it's possible that Nyx just simply wasn't spaced correctly for it. Uh, they committed to it a little bit too soon. You can't be over committing on uh, Ness's shield like that. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna be grabbed, you're gonna be back thrown. And man, Ness, Ness's grab range might not be all that, but wow, does he have some incredible throws with so much utility. Uh, there were definitely some opportunities for the Knicks to be able to take the stock, such as when MKL was getting back onto the stage. That is the prime opportunity to counter uh, Ness's recovery, you know? Um, but Nyx was probably just not comfortable uh, in that position, or they just didn't think of the option in time. But either way, good stuff to MKL to be able to close this one out. Uh, they had really solid PK fire follow-ups and great catches on landings. Uh, and just really good use of PK Thunder when edge coding. And so with that, uh, the, the lead for Hawaii has been cut in half thanks to MKL Rising. He earns this Canisius squad four points. So the, the score currently sits at eight to four in favor of Hawaii as we look to get into our fourth set of the match. It appears Flapjack is going to be the go-to guy here for Canisius, uh, Flapjack, uh, I believe he is the fi uh, infamous Crom main of this roster, and uh, still waiting to hear who will go in on the side of University of Hawaii. Uh, it, I know that Double A Battery is their usually their go-to guy that, uh, for this roster, a Cloud main. So I wonder if they will send him in now, or if they will hold him as their anchor.